All right. And hey there, Facebook. Prophet David Taylor here. Let me just get our thing going here. One more thing going here because you got to love technology, right? <laughs> All right, good. God bless you. Great to see you again. Thank you for everybody that's tuning in live for my weekly prophetic word. And as always, I'm, I'm blessed and honored and privileged to bring you a prophetic word from the Lord because it's an honor to be used by God. Remember what I tell you all the time is that God does not need you. <laughs> Those of you that are fighting your call, if you're fighting a call, whatever that is, whatever it is you feel God calling you to do, he's calling you to a life that's better than the one you have now. He's calling you to a life that's higher than the one you have now. He's calling you to a life that's better than the one you would live on your own. So that's why you hear me say it all the time, that God does not need you. If you feel the call of God on your life in any direction, God has given you an opportunity to become all that he made you to be. He's given you an opportunity to know him. He's given you an opportunity to not waste your days. Because at some point you're going to be out of days here on planet earth so if you feel the call of god it's because he's trying to give you an opportunity not to waste your life okay so i say that to encourage those of you that are struggling with your call of god to surrender to his lordship i know you don't want to i know you have to crucify your flesh i know you have to crucify what you think but on the other side of that cross is a resurrection into a new life that's better than the one you would have lived on your own so I say that all the time to let you know I count it as a privilege to be a prophet. I count it as a privilege to flow in the prophetic. I count it as a privilege to be used by God because God does not need me. <laughs> He's just given me an opportunity to serve him, and I want to take full advantage of that opportunity because at some point I'm going to run out of days, and when I do, I want my life to have counted, and I want to have a full reward when I stand before him in judgment. You see what I mean? You don't want to stand before God in judgment and you don't have anything to show for your life. Okay? That's not what I'm going to talk about, but I just felt compelled to say that. And because I know that people are watching me from all over the world. We had some wonderful guests from all over the world in our service this morning. And I just want to let you know that if you feel a call from God on your life, accept it. Stop fighting it. Surrender to it. Because what he's calling you to is a better life than the life you would have lived on your own, okay? All right, that's not what I'm going to talk about today, but I felt the need to go there. So let's pray, and we're going to dive into our message for today. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for another opportunity of life. Thank you for another opportunity to serve you. Thank you, God, for your grace, Lord. When I think about your grace, Lord, I am overwhelmed. I don't even know what to say, oh God, because your grace is so rich and abundant and magnificent. And your mercy endures forever, oh God. And you have been so rich and so good to us. So I just thank you. I just praise you, oh God. And I just bless your name. So please be in this broadcast today, oh God. I surrender my mind, my heart, my lips, my words, my hands, every part of me to the Holy Ghost. So you can speak through me, oh God, so that what you want said will be said, that you might be glorified in all things. And I thank you for it and I believe you for it. And we're looking forward to hearing from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right. So please like and share. Please uh, share this video. Uh, and please uh, like this video, those of you on Periscope and uh, Facebook Live. And then remember, if you don't see it live, you can always watch the broadcast on Facebook Live or my Twitter, PDTSOTC, or uh, Periscope, or, um, oh, hey, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in from Malaysia. Please pray for me. Okay, okay, I'll do that. I, I definitely will pray. Uh, put the prayer request up there. What is it that you want prayer for? Be specific. Okay? Uh, let me know. But I definitely will pray. And so, you can always watch the replay, okay? What we're going to talk about today, what, I'll pro what the prophetic word for today is, is two words, be still. Be still. Okay? Now I'm going to show you our scripture reference, and then I'm going to exegete some of the scripture, and then we're going to minister prophetically. Okay. Now, the first thing I need you to understand about the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms in the Bible is primarily for the, okay, correction from the Lord for this, oh, direction. Okay, all right. 
Let me do that. Let me pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you would give them direction for the season, oh God, or in the summer season. I don't know, you've got things, specific things you want us to do. So please give them direction to speak to them so they'll know which way to go so they can stay in step and stay in sync with you through your perfect will. Give them a prophetic word. Give them confirmation. Give them the witness of man, God, so they'll know that they're in the will of God for their lives. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Whenever you pray for a direction, okay, God's going to give you direction. Direction might come from different places. It might be a prophetic word. It might be a scripture. <clears throat> it might be somebody giving you a witness. It might be a knowing in your spirit. But God will make you know when, you, when you're obedient, when you're doing it right, okay? Okay, so back to the book of Psalms. I need you to understand that the Psalms are primarily music. Amen. God bless you. You're welcome. The Psalms are primarily music. So when you're reading the Psalms, many times you are actually reading songs. You're reading songs and song lyrics. And at the beginning of the Psalms, many times there are directions, just like if you look, like I know a lot of people don't, don't uh, necessarily use manuscript anymore, but you look at, if you look at sheet music, you see uh, the clefs, you see the key signature, you see the tempo, you see all that kind of information. That's what's in the Psalms. Because they're music, most of them are music, okay? So our Psalm today is Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Now, there's some instructions before that that says, To the choir master of the sons of Korah, according to Alamoth, a song. Okay, so that's to the head of the choir from the sons of Korah. Now, that was a particular group of musicians in David's time, in David's temple, because he divided them. He divided the musicians, the priests, and the ushers. And then, according to Alamoth, that could be either a style or a musical instrument, because sometimes they notated what instruments they wanted it to be played on, okay? Just so you have some background. And what we're going to read is a very familiar passage, but again, I'm going to bring some new stuff to you. Um, we're going to start at verse 8 and read through verse 11. Psalm 46, verses 8 through 11. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Now there's some debate as to what Selah means. Some people think that Selah means a man. Some people think Selah means a man with vehemence, strong agreement. Some people think that Selah is a musical notation that means a pause in the music. So there's a bunch of different interpretations as to what Selah means. Okay? Now, why is what I read important? If you read the entire psalm, you will hear that it's talking about the power of God and God exercising his power over the enemies, over the nations, okay? And how uh, even when the nations are fighting against God, God could just stretch forth his hand and defeat entire nations of people. So it says in verse 8, Behold the works of the Lord, I has brought desolations on the earth. Sometimes desolation, wiping stuff out, comes from God. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. Okay, he's talking about a bow and arrow and a spear. Those are weapons of war. He burns the chariots with fire. A chariot is a weapon of war. Then it says, Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Now what does that have to do with us today? What the Holy Spirit was showing me was that what God is trying to say to somebody, somebody listening to me right now, is that what you need to do is you need to be still. You are so busy fighting and trying and fighting and trying and fighting and trying and fighting and trying and pushing and fighting and trying and pushing and fighting and trying that you have not learned how to step back and be spit and be still and know that the Lord your God will fight your battles for you. That's in verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. When you see that phrase in the Bible, the Lord of hosts, one interpretation of that is he's talking about hosts of angels. He's talking about God has so many angels. John said he saw so many angels in heaven that there's not a number that humans have that's actually big enough to count the number of angels that God has. So when he's talking about the Lord of hosts, he's talking about God's got armies 
that are bigger than the armies of earth. So what the Holy Spirit was showing me is that some of you listen to me right now are frustrated. You frustrated yourself because you keep trying to fight the fight. You keep trying to go against whatever it is that you're going against. And the Lord is trying to tell you to be still and know that he is God. So let me give you some practical examples. Let me give you some practical steps to actually do that. First thing that you need to learn how to do is when you go before the Lord in prayer, after you get through talking to God, you have to sit still and let him talk to you. However it is that the Lord deals with you, he might give you, give you a dream or vision. He might not say anything in the moment. He might lead you to a scripture. But many times when we're talking to God, we're so busy telling God what we want and giving out what we want. There's nothing wrong with that. We're supposed to do that. But there's no time where you, after you talk to God, where you sit still and let the Lord's presence wash over you and you let him talk to you. Okay? Because many times in that stillness, in that quietness, the Spirit of God will speak to you. Jesus will speak to you and give you some instruction and give you some direction, okay, that you wouldn't have heard if you're just so busy or just so frantic and just so worried all the time. And that's how many times people miss the gentle leading of the Holy Spirit because he's quiet, okay? He's quiet, and sometimes you're just not used to sitting still and after you told God everything in your heart, and after you told God everything that you want, then sometimes you just have to sit still and let the Lord minister to you. Let the Lord talk to you. Let the Lord love on you. And many times in that fellowship, you will get answers and direction. Okay? So that's practical step number one. In your quiet time with God, after you get through talking to God, sit still for a few minutes and let him talk to you. Number one. Number two uh, sometimes you have to quiet your mind, and my pastor's been preaching on the brain and the mind and how that's altered by experiences, and it's been a phenomenal series. Sometimes you have to quiet your mind. You have to clear out what I call the real estate space in your mind because y'all are letting some people occupy rental space in your mind, and they ain't bringing you no rent. They ain't bringing nothing to your life. They're just taking up space. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need to create a sense of stillness in your mind because you have too many of the wrong people in it, okay? But then it's so, that's practical step number two. Number one, sit still, let the Lord talk to you. Number two, clear out some of the real estate space in your mind. But then it goes on to say, be still and know that I am God. What does that mean? That means that God is bigger than any situation you're in. God is smarter than anybody you're up against. God has more money than whatever situation you're in. That God has literally unlimited resources. That's why the whole psalm talks about how the Lord has power over the nations and power over war, power to make desolation and power to make war stop and power to break the bow and the spear. In other words, just to put it more plainly, God knows how to shut some stuff down. There's, there might be some noise in your life. God has enough power to shut that stuff down if you would just be still and clear out some mind space and understand that maybe God is telling you to let him fight for you. Now, what's coming to mind as I'm saying this is sometimes when we get in over-emotional states, anger, frustration, sometimes if you're hungry, not just hungry physically, but hungry emotionally, or sometimes if your heart is full of vengeance or retaliation, you're not going to be able to think clearly. And God is telling you to be still, calm down, spend time in his presence and let him talk back to you and clear out some space in your mind. And then you begin to realize that whoever is upsetting you, whoever is bothering you, they're not bigger than the Lord. They're not bigger than the Lord. And whatever situation you're dealing with, it's not bigger than God. And then it says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. You know what that means? That means that God is going to get the glory ultimately. That ultimately, it doesn't matter what man does. We have to give him the glory. He's going to be lifted up. And so I've discovered that in your relationship with God, it's always easier to do what the Lord says do from the jump. And then you can just kind of sit back and watch things play out. If you're in the will of God, if you're in obedience, you can do what the Lord says do and watch God exalt himself. 
But some of y'all listen to me right now. That's why you're so frustrated. That's why you don't have any peace. That's why you've been struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling. Because you haven't sat still and realized that God is going to be exalted in the situation. Let God get the glory. You busy trying to get the glory. You busy trying to fight the fight. That's why you're so frustrated and tired all the time. Then I'm going to read verse 11. It says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Wow. So the Lord with all them angels, more angels than there are people in heaven, is for us. And then he's our fortress. He's the thing that we run into and hide and shut that big old door and lock the lock and hide behind. That's right. God can even hide you to where your enemies can't see you. God can even hide you to where your enemies can't find you. God can confound your enemies where they can't find you at all. So it's in the stillness, however, that you discover all these truths that I'm giving you. It's in the stillness when you are still before God and when your mind is clear that you can hear the gentle proddings of the Holy Spirit. Now let me uh, give you some other examples. Haven't you ever been driving and something told you don't go that way or do go this way? It wasn't loud. It was just kind of annoying. And then you didn't listen to it. And then you find yourself in a traffic jam or someplace. And then you say, I knew I should have taken that right turn. I knew I should have gone down that street. Has that ever happened to you? That's the spirit of God giving you that gentle leading. And a lot of people don't know how to follow the Holy, Holy Spirit on that level because he's going to give you that gentle leading. It's not going to be loud, okay? That's especially true for those of you that flow in the prophetic, okay? Say what the Holy Spirit wants you to say and then let it go. Don't say any more. Don't say any less. The Spirit will let you know when that cutoff is there because, because the Holy Spirit is quiet and gentle and he's going to give you that gentle leading. And some people are so frantic and they live their lives at a fever pitch that you never calm it down long enough to hear that still small voice that's speaking on the inside of your spirit, letting you know what's going on and what to do and what not to do. Does that make sense? Also, the Spirit of God will show you things before they happen. And that kind of happens in the stillness when you can sit down and clear your mind and let God talk to you, and God can show you things that are yet to come. God can show you things that haven't happened yet and get you in on the flow before they unfold in linear time. That's one of the advantages of being a Christian, and that's one of the advantages of flowing in the prophetic. Did you know that? Did you know that you could see things in the Spirit before they happen? Did you know that you can see the enemy coming before he shows up? Did you know that you can see when there's a wrong spirit on somebody? Did you know that you can see all that if your spirit is quiet and your mind is clear? That's why God is saying the word to some folks right now is you need to learn how to be still. You need to learn how to be still. You can't be friends with everybody. You can't be on every committee. You can't go to everything. And when you run yourself ragged like that, you can get so tired or so busy. You no, no, no longer listen to what the Lord is saying. Can you see that? Okay. So uh, if I have any questions or any prayer requests, put them on the screen. I'm about to go to the Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit about if there's any words for deliverance or finances or any other prophetic words. But that's the word for today is to be still. Let God talk to you, clear your mind of things, and listen to those gentle leadings of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh, one more before I go into that. One more example. Don't you know if the devil is trying to send a wrong relationship in your life, don't you know that the Holy Spirit will tell you? And I don't just mean romantically. I mean sometimes friendship, sometimes business relationships. I've been in situations where... <laughs> I've been dealing with someone on a business level and then they just blew up and lost their temper and just went off. And I mean O-F-F-F-F off. They just went off. And sometimes I'm taken aback. Sometimes you're taken aback at that because some, sometimes you do something 
and the response you get is disproportional to what you did. Do you know what that is? That's the Spirit of God making them reveal. Reveal what's in them. Reveal that maybe somebody with all that much temper ain't who you want to do business with anyway. Okay, I just had to throw that one in. Okay, so now when you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Spirit about deliverance, finances, other prophetic words of physical healing. Okay? Okay, the Lord is saying someone has, someone looking at me right now has been struggling with chronic headaches and chronic pain. God is saying that your problem is that you are too stressed out. The reason you're having those headaches and the reason you're popping the, that pain medication uh, is because you're too stressed out. So God says he's going to show you how to reduce the stress in your life by getting your schedule under control, by trying not to do everything all in one day, by learning how to set goals to help relieve some of your stress. And remember, God is always trying to teach us how to trust him and not trust in ourselves. That's going to be a part of it too. And all that still falls under the be still thing. That if you want to get rid of some of that headache and some of that stress, God is going to show you how to rearrange your schedule to get rid of that stress. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Holy Ghost is show me, showing me that wedding bells are going to ring for somebody, somebody soon in your life. Wedding bells are going to ring. Wow, <laughs> and congratulations. So if you've been praying about getting married and you've been preparing to get married and you've been wanting to get married, for some people, that's on the way. If the Spirit of God tells you that wedding bells are in your future, what you're supposed to do is prepare. Don't waste the time. A lot of people think they, that they go out and meet people and then they get ready. That's backwards. You should get ready and then let the Lord bring that person in your life. So let God show you how to prepare for those wedding bells to come. Don't spend all your time planning the wedding. Spend your time planning the marriage. And, and, and the best place to do that is to sit at the feet of Jesus and be still and let the one that invented marriage instruct you. Let him tell you how to be married, when to get married. Uh, whom to get married to. But the Holy Ghost said there's wedding bells in somebody's future. Wow. So I hope that's a, an encouragement to somebody, but I hope you don't waste the time. Don't waste the time, but get ready so that when God brings that special person in your life, you'll be ready. You'll know how to be a husband. You'll know how to be a wife because once the infatuation wears off, you're going to need more than the infatuation stage. You're going to know have to know how to build a marriage. Okay? Okay. Okay. Holy Ghost is saying somebody's nose is in pain, or maybe you have allergies. If you want that nose healed, put your right hand on your nose and say, In the name of Jesus, I command my nose to be every whit whole. I command my sinuses to open up. And I command uh, all irritation and inflammation to leave my nose and my sinuses. And I cause my nose to be every whit whole right now in Jesus' name. All right. Okay. The Lord is saying in the stillness, in the be still, the stillness God is saying he's going to reveal some financial plans. So some of you looking at me. Right now, you've been praying to God about your finances. God has a specific plan for you. And the Lord is going to begin to reveal those plans in your stillness as you sit still before God and let him show you. Because what you had in mind for your finances might not be what God had in mind. Whatever God has in mind is greater than what you thought. But that's why he has to show you the path or the way to get to where it is he's trying to get you. See what I mean? Some of y'all have been struggling with budgetary issues and you've been struggling with discipline for maybe like a year now and you don't understand why God's been taking you down that path. 
because as God elevates you financially, if you don't have discipline and budgeting down, it actually won't matter how much money the Lord gives you. It won't matter how much money comes into your life if you don't have discipline and a budgetary structure. So the Holy Spirit was showing me that in the stillness that you're going to start to practice this week, God is going to begin to real, reveal financial plans. And I want you to remember that God's financial plan for you is specific. So stop looking at other people. Okay? Stop looking at other people saying, why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? His plan is going to be specific to you. It's going to be specific to you. That's why you have to sit still and let him go. For example, some of y'all want to go back to school. God can show you a way to go back to school without getting a bunch of debt. Some of y'all want to buy a home. God can show you how to get with the right real estate agent. Some real estate agents out there are Christians. God can hook you up with a brother or sister in Christ. God can give you favor with the bank. You might not even be looking in the right neighborhood. There's all kinds of things that only the Lord can tell you. That's why you hear me say all the time, you hear me say it all the time, you need a relationship with all three levels of the word. You need a relationship with the written word of God, which is the Bible. You need a relationship with Jesus, which is the living word of God, which is the Bible in action. And then you need a relationship with the prophetic or the rhema word of God, the fresh breathed word of God that's coming out of his mouth now. Because what house should I buy and helicopters and what college should I go to is not in the Bible. <laughs> you have to get that directly from God through a rhema word. Do you see what I mean? So, so God is going to reveal that to you in the, in the stillness. And that is why so many people miss their season. I'm going to throw this out at you and then I'm going to be done. Did you know that 2015, the summer of 2015, that was a spouse season? That was a time where the Holy Spirit was saying that a lot of people could have gotten their spouses four years ago. And I know that some people miss spouse season because they weren't sitting still long enough letting the Lord tell them that now is spouse season. Because if you run around doing a bunch of things and you don't have any time to listen to the Lord, you're going to miss what God is doing. Because God does not work on our timetable. God works on his own timetable. And then he tells us what to do. And then we HBO, we hear, believe, and obey. If you want to work on your timetable, you're going to miss the Lord. That's why so many people aren't walking in blessings that they could have been walking in 20 years ago. There are some blessings you could have been walking in two decades ago. Do you know why you're not walking in them? Because back there in that season when the Lord was trying to talk to you, you weren't still. You didn't know how to be still. You didn't know how to sit still and listen and let the Lord tell you, this is what I want you to do in this season. You were busy running your own plans, and as subsequently you missed out on blessings that you could have had 20 years ago. A lot of people do that. A lot of Christians do that. A lot of Christians are busy because, again, you hear me say it all the time. You accepted him as Savior. You got born again, but you didn't accept him as Lord. You got born again. You believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross for your sins and rose again the third day. You believe that and you accepted that. That's accepting him as Savior. But in terms of running your day-to-day -day life, in terms of making your plans, you never accepted him as Lord. You never went to him and surrendered and laid your life down and said, not my will, but thine be done. And give God your money. Give God your di diet. Excuse me. Give God your time. Give God your relationships. Give God your marriage. Give God your car. Give, give God your job. Give God your career. You never did that. You still running it. And if you still have your hands on the steering wheel of your life, you are going to miss the will of God. you got to take your hands off the wheel and say, Jesus, take the will. You have to accept him not just as Savior, that was his work on the cross, but accept him also as Lord. That's him directing the seasons of your life. And I'm going to give this example. You've heard me say it before, but I'm saying it because I want to encourage somebody. Oh, man, who was this? At least four years ago now, was it 2019? Yeah. At least four years ago, I had a book ready that I wanted to release. And the Lord told me, do not release that book, release this one. And I said, are you sure? Because that's not what I had in mind. Because I thought it was going to go one way. And the Lord said, don't release that one, release that one, this one. And when I released the book that the Lord told me to release, my entire life changed. <laughs> 
My entire life changed, not just my career, my life. My entire life changed, and so many things opened up to me, things that I'm still getting blessings and benefits from that I would have not gotten benefits from if I had released the book that I thought to release. And I ended up not releasing that book until three or four years later because I was not trying to run the show, because I was not trying just to deal with Jesus as Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I was trying to deal with Jesus as Lord and say, not my will, Lord, but thine be done. You tell me what to do, and I'll follow your instruction. And my whole life changed with something as simple as switching the books. That's absolutely right. I'm not making that up. I'm telling you the truth. Because I'm always telling you that anything that I'm preaching or teaching that I'm telling you to do, that I'm doing it myself. <clears throat> and so that's just an example from my life to tell you why it's so important to not just accept him as Savior, but also accept him as Lord. And when you need to make a decision to learn how to be still, go before the Lord and say, Lord, here's what I think and here's what I want, but I'm laying it down before you. Now you tell me what to do. You tell me what's right. You tell me, and you might find that God tells you the back burner, what you had on the front, and the front burner, what you had on the back. You'll never know until you ask him. You'll never know until you spend time in his presence and you let him talk to you. Because you can't assume you have to let the Lord tell you. You understand what I mean? And so don't be like those Christians where two years from now, five years from now, when we get into 2021 and 2024, where you still out the will of God. You still haven't gone back to school. You still haven't got married. You still haven't started that business because you're not listening to what the Lord is saying. Don't be like that. Don't let another year, yea, not even another day of your life pass where you don't sit still and get instruction from the Lord and let the Lord tell you what to do next and get in line with his plan. Once you do that, like I said at the top of the broadcast, he will take you to a life that's better than the one you could have built on your own. Because I'm telling you, when I made that book release, the way the Lord said do it, my whole life changed. And it wouldn't have happened if I had done what I thought. Okay? All right. Amen. God bless. If there's any more prayer requests, put them on the screen. I want to pray for you uh, before we go. Okay? Any more prayer requests? Now, if I don't see them when you put them up there, then I will go back and look at my Facebook and my Twitter and my Periscope and everything, and I will pray for them if I don't see them live. I just want you to know that, okay? So now this Thursday is actually my No More Genies broadcast coming up. Because a week ago was the 4th of July. Uh, that was the first Thursday because July came in on a Monday. So this Thursday coming up, July 11th, I'm going to be doing my No More Genies broadcast at 7 o'clock p.m. on Facebook Live and Periscope. And I'm going to be talking about the series that I started under No More Genies was We Do It Wrong, Part 2. So I strongly encourage you to look at Part 1 because it's on my Facebook page and on YouTube. And this Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m., Thursday, July 11th, live, I'm going to be talking about We Do It Wrong, Part 2. Okay? And then I'll be back next Sunday at my regular time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Facebook Live, Periscope, and Twitter. And then you can watch the replay on all those same places and YouTube. Also, I have Zelle now. A couple people told me they wanted to sow into my ministry. So if you want to sow into my ministry, you can sow to my Zelle. Uh, because uh, a lot of people said that's the app that they prefer. So my email is prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com. Just like it sounds. P-R-O-P-H-E-T-D-A-V-I-D. T-A-Y-L-O-R at gmail.com. So if you want to sow into my ministry, you can do that using Zelle. And remember, whenever you sow, in, whenever somebody ministers to you, whenever you sow finances into them, you're going to get the same blessing God has put on them. You're going to get some of their mantle. You're going to get some of their anointing. You're going to get whatever good things you see in them when you sow into their ministry and you partner with them, then that blessing comes on you. That's what I've discovered a lot of Christians don't understand. So if you love your pastor or you love a ministry or someone ministers to you on a regular basis and you love what they do, if you help financially support them and you sow into what they're doing, then some of that mantle and some of that anointing gets on you too. So you get stronger in the prophetic, you get stronger in your visions, you get a hunger and thirst 
to get into the word. So, uh, so again, yeah, so that's why I'm glad I'm sitting underneath my pastor. My pastor is a strong apostle and a strong prophet. And he's strong in the apostolic and the prophetic. So the more I sow into his ministry and the more I sit under his leadership, the more you begin to absorb that mantle and you get stronger in the apostolic and you get strong in deliverance and you get stronger in the prophetic. That's the way it works. So that's why God says we're not supposed to rob him in tithes and offerings, but when God has given you spiritual meat through, you know, the leadership gifts, you're supposed to sow finances and then you will get the blessing of receiving some of that mantle and some of that anointing as well. Okay? So God bless you. Thank you so much for those of you that tuned in live. Thank you for all of you that are watching around the world. I really appreciate it, and I hope this ministry has been a blessing to you. Thank you for all of you that are going to watch this in the future, a uh, hundred years after I'm gone. God bless you. You know, the Word of God will still be relevant. The, the anointing of God, the Spirit of God will still be there. And who knows? You never know how God is going to use what you say. That's why I always encourage you to do your ministry. Do what the Lord is telling you to do. You never know how God is going to use you. Okay? So thank you so much. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And remember, this week, we're going to practice being still before God and knowing that he is God and letting the Lord give us the instruction that we need to be in his perfect will and to receive every blessing he wants us to have. All right? Amen and God bless.